everyone. Welcome to College Kitchen. I'm Najee Muhammad. And I'm Gabe Gibbs. And we are here at the Boston Vegetarian Food Festival, and I'm very excited. Gabe, tell them why. Well, there's a lot of reasons to be excited here at the Boston Vegetarian Food Festival. First of all, it's the 18th annual Boston Vegetarian Food Festival. And as a Boston vegan, mm -hmm. she's very excited to be a vegan at the Vegetarian oh. Food Festival. Exactly. Yeah, all kinds of good stuff going on. So we're going to go around. We're going to have a little tasty taste, a little sample-y sample, and have a good time. Have yeah? a good time. Now, Gabe, we're here at the Boston Vegetarian Food Festival. Yes, we are. And I'm thinking that we should raise the stakes a little bit. Okay. So Gabe is a carnivore. You know, he eats mainly meat, every now and then some leafy greens. Don't tell oh, me. said that a little loud here. But Gabe, I'm wondering yeah. if you think that you can make this a lifestyle because of something delicious you eat here today. Okay. I'm thinking we can make a friendly wager. Okay. And by friendly, I mean if you like something you eat, you should take me on a date. Great. Yeah? Yeah. Let's have a little cheek kiss, seal the deal. All right. Gabe is going to be impressed here today, and I'm going to get my date that I've been waiting for for three years. <laughs> Follow us. Well, we're here with Robin Adams, who is a part of the, uh, the committee that threw this whole thing together um, for the last few years. Is this your first time being a part of the committee? Oh, gosh, no. No? Go oh, gosh, no. <laughs> I've been doing, I think this is my fourth or fifth year. Okay, okay. wow. And what makes this year different than other years? Um, every year has its own personality. Mm. And our personality comes from the neighborhood. Mm. It comes from the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, so every year is a little bit different. Mm. And this year we really have seen where we are locally. Is it always here? It has been here for many years. Okay. Um, it, which has been a bit of a concern because when we started it was very small. Okay. Very small. Yeah. Um, and now we have usually 20,000 plus people wow. over the course of a 20, weekend. Wow, 20,000 people, that's yeah. amazing. That's a lot. If you had to go to one, if there was one, they were like, you only have four minutes to run down and get food at one of these places, you would go where and you would get what? Wow. That's big, that's Be big. Being a chef. Mmm, okay. And Game being changer. someone that teaches cooking. <laughs> yes. I would go to Gardein. Oh, Gardein. Gardein. Gardein has amazing products. That is a transitional product. Okay. For everyone that's like, oh, I can never be vegan because I can't give up, go try Gardein. Okay. Because you're going to find out you're not giving up anything. Yeah. No. You're learning wonderful new foods. Robin, I have a final question for you. Mm. If you could give any advice to a college student, whether they're vegan or not, on how to eat healthily and live nutritiously, what would that advice be? I would recommend Michael Pollan's book, Food Rules. Mm -hmm. Three simple rules to eating. Eat food, mostly plants, not too much. Not too much. Not the too eat much. food part, people don't quite understand. I do eat food. That yellow white piece of rubber in plastic, what food is that? Yeah. <laughs> that is not food. Yeah. Go back to what you learned when you were a child from your family. If you don't know what it is, don't put it in your mouth. That's right. That's great. <laughs> well, thank you, Robin. We're going to throw it to Akriti at Wild Card right now. Bonjour, je m'appelle Akriti Jagmohan, and welcome back to another episode of Wild Card. Today, we are at Gaslight Brasserie, located at 560 Harrison Avenue in the South End. Come join me as I have a wonderful Parisian experience. My name is Michael Zentner. I'm the chef of cuisine at Gaslight uh, Brasserie. The concept of a brasserie in France, in Paris, for instance, you have three styles. You have restaurants, then you have bistros, then you have brasseries. Our restaurant's name is Brasserie du Coin, which means on the corner. In Paris, all the, all the brasseries, a lot of them on the corners because they're near the train stations, which is where all the you know, worker people would go on the train to get to their house. So the concept is just a little bit more rustic than you would at a brasserie, which is good or right a bistro, which is a wine bar. So that would be a little bit more upscale restaurant. Because of that style, what we've gone for is to make it, it's really loud, it's very bustling, there's a lot going on. Uh, the menu prices are a little bit less, um, the food's a little bit simpler, and like the atmosphere of this restaurant, we've actually brought in a bunch of things from France, like the floor, um, the tiles, all this kind of sequence that's happening here is all specifically designed from places in Paris. The menu's approachable, even though it's French. Some people think French food is like, you know, really out there. It's, we just cook meat and potatoes like everybody else. I try to keep things as traditional as possible, but also making them, you know, 
fun and interesting and taking older dishes from a long time ago and maybe recreating them and making them a little bit more modern. Um, we also make all our own charcuterie. We do lots of different things like that. So I probably like the pork chop the best um, if I had to choose. It is very good. It's uh, Berkshire pork. A sauce out of the trimmings from our bacon that we make. So it's a very good little dish. So. This right here is Gaslight's famous pork chops topped with caramelized onions, baked potatoes and spinach. <laughs> That is really delicious. It's one of the best pork chops I've actually ever eaten. The juiciness of the pork is fantastic and it just has the right amount of salt to be balanced out with the spinach, the salad and the potatoes, especially with the caramel onions. Gaslight is a classic Parisian brasserie that is perfect to go out on a date or enjoy a great meal with friends. Menu items include the classic steak frites, sweet potato ravioli and the delicious duck confit. With many aspects of the restaurant brought in from Paris, it cannot get more authentic than this. At Gaslight, a good time and a great meal is always guaranteed. Spend a lovely time in Paris except in Boston. Be sure to check out Gaslight Brasserie on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining me here on Wildcard. I'm your host, Afriti Jagmohan, and I hope you have a wild day. Adieu. Hey guys, welcome back. We're here with Sam and Adam from Veggie Galaxy, and we're super excited. Today they're passing out some vegan mac and cheese, so we're really pumped about that. And so we've got a couple questions for you guys. Hopefully you guys are uh, ready to rock. Um, our first question is, what, um, what makes you guys want to come to a festival like this? I guess the real reason that we come every year is we think there are still a lot of people out there who don't know about us. So okay. We want to have that presence and let more people find out about us. And That's great. Absolutely. Cool. Cool. And now I know that you have vegan mac and cheese and I am in fact a vegan. Are there a lot of vegan options on your menu? Almost everything on the menu is vegan already. Anything that's not can be made vegan. Good, okay. good, good. And now Sam, what is your favorite meal on the menu or dessert? My favorite thing is the Kendall Square version. Okay. Ooh. Uh, I prefer the Black Bean Burger personally. But then you get uh, onion rings on top of it. Yes. Ooh. Like a puree yeah. With garlic mayo. Yeah. It's really good. And if you, if you were to take someone on a date, would you say that Veggie Galaxy is a, a good place for that? Oh, yeah, it's a great place to go. Yeah, it has a diner vibe. It's, it's like, good, awesome. I love it. And now, where are you located? If someone wants to go to the restaurant and just eat, have a date or something, where would you go for that? Uh, Veggie Galaxy is in Cambridge, we're right in Central Square, uh, right near the T, so it's pretty easy to get to. Okay. Cool. Awesome. All right, now, question of the morning. Can we try a sample? Yeah. Right. We've got vegan mac and cheese, folks. Vegan mac and cheese. Here we go. Mm. Wait. I'm obsessed with this. I'm obsessed. Hold on. Mm. <laughs> I like it a lot. That's the only bite that you get, and the rest is mine. Well, guys, we just had a great time at Veggie Galaxy here at the Boston Vegetarian Food Festival. We're going to toss it now to Ben over at Green Goods. Thanks, guys. Ben Stoll here once again for Green Goods at one of my favorite restaurants in Alston, Rue. Hi, my name is Dina Jalal, and I'm one of the owners of Root in Alston, Massachusetts. And we focus in plant-based, from scratch food and beverages. We make everything in-house, and what we don't, we try to always source locally. Um, we have a short, concise, um, but diverse menu of food that we make completely from scratch here, and the juice bar as well, and um, a couple of house-made drinks. And we try to keep everything um, different and seasonal, so the menu items do change regularly. Today, you guys will be sampling our root burger, which is probably the most popular thing on the menu. Um, and that starts with black beans, quinoa, um, a whole bunch of veg, like carrots, onions, garlic, and it's topped off with Boston lettuce, tomato, and crispy onions. An absolute explosion of flavor and texture. You have the crispiness from the onion and the juiciness from the onion itself. It adds a lot of depth into the flavor and texture that are going on. What I love the most is obviously the burger itself because you can actually see the beans and the different veg that's inside it as opposed to just one that you can pick up from the grocery store that looks kind of like a paste. 
And in addition to, we have these perfectly seasoned flowers. We had some amazing vegan cuisine today at Ruben Alston. As always, I'm your host, Ben Stoll. Gabe and Aja, back to you. We are here with Keegan from Upton's Naturals. He's going to tell us all about what's going on behind this table. Keegan? Hi, I'm um, just sampling our bacon seitan. Uh, we have five varieties. We have Italian, chorizo, ground, and traditional. And I'm uh, sampling out our bacon seitan today. It's our newest variety. Awesome. So Keegan, so uh, for, for a naive man like myself, what is seitan? So seitan is actually a traditional Japanese recipe. It's been around for thousands of years. It's a wheat-based meat alternative. Okay. And it's really simple. It's, very, it's almost like making a loaf of bread. It's wheat, water, and spices, and that's it. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you guys have a ton of different varieties, I see. And so where, you, if, I, if I wanted to pick this up, if I wanted to get some Uptons, I would go where? Uh, namely Whole Foods. Okay. Um, but uh, we've really experienced tremendous growth in the past year as a company. Um, this time last year, we were available in what, maybe 15 states. Now we're in all 50. Wow. So we're available Whole Foods, but also co-ops, natural food stores, everywhere. Congratulations. That's amazing. Now, I see a bunch of different flavors here. I got two questions. My first one is, what's your favorite? My second one is, I see some men with mustaches and some without. What's the biggest difference? Well, uh, they all have different mustaches. That's kind of the branding. Uh, each variety has a different mustache. The traditional <laughs> is clean shaven, because okay. Upton, that's traditional Uptons. Um, and I think uh, right now, I go back and forth, because I eat the stuff all the time. Yeah. Uh, I think right now the traditional is my favorite. It's my go-to, just because it's, it's very basic, and it's really easy to work with. So. That's great. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Can we get a little sample? Of course. Awesome. So we're going to toss it out to Man Food right now. So what's going on over at Man Food? Some real bacon, probably. <laughs> Hi, welcome to College Kitchen. I'm your guest host and resident pizza expert, James Donner. And on tonight's episode, we're visiting Pinocchio's Pizza in Harvard Square, a place legendary among Harvard students. And tonight, we're going to see if it lives up to the hype. Hi, I'm here with Jerry Penza, an employee of Pinocchio's Pizza, and I'm here to talk to him about the place. So, how long has been Pinocchio's Pizza been open? Since uh, 1966. It's a family owner uh, restaurant. That's great. Um, so, what is your signature pizza here? Uh, it's Sicilian style pizza. Uh, it's really, really good. It's light pizza. It's, it's, uh, it's a great pizza. That's what we, you know, famous for for Sicilian, Sicilian style pizza. And what's your favorite slice of pizza? Uh, tomato and basil slice. And what makes Pinocchio's Pizza so popular with college students and everyone around the Harvard area? Um, because we 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 use uh, like good ingredients and uh, you know everybody likes to come over here. We go with kids and you know they like us. We got a good food. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Let's go eat. You want to hear a joke about pizza? Never mind. It's too cheesy. I'm here in front at Pinocchio's Pizza with many different types of pizza. We have buffalo chicken, pepperoni, sausage, and onion and pepper. Let's try this buffalo chicken pizza out. Wow, you can really taste the crispy dough, and the blue cheese, and the chicken, and the buffalo sauce. Really great pizza. Now let's try out this pepperoni pizza. Mm. 
Whoa, you can really taste that sauce. And that pepperoni sausage, incredible. I'm James, and we've just been at Pinocchio's Pizza in Harvard Square. Don't forget to check it out. Now, if you don't mind, I have some pizza to eat. Pizza out. Hey guys, welcome back. We're here with Paul from Cafe Indigo. And we're gonna have a couple questions for Paul because it's looking pretty exciting over here. The table's going crazy. So Paul, what brings you to a place like the Boston Vegetarian Food Festival? What makes oh. you wanna come to this? Well, we've been, we've been coming for a number of years and yeah. I have to tell you, we love uh, having the opportunity to share our delicious vegan food with yeah. a very appreciative audience. Um, our mission is to help everyone enjoy vegan food and, we, and we're thrilled that we make it and we're thrilled that when we come here that people have a chance to enjoy it. Yeah, that's Absolutely. awesome. Now Paul, if people want to come um, to some place other than the, the festival, where are you located so that we can find it? Alright, well we're actually uh, in Concord, New Hampshire. We have a commercial bakery there where we make all of our products. Yeah. You can get us on Twitter at, at Cafe Indigo. Absolutely. Find us on Facebook. Yeah. At Cafe yes. Indigo. Wow. Yeah. And that's then, awesome. you know, our website. Too. Great. So what is what is your favorite favorite thing on the menu? When you wake up, you're like, oh, I can't believe I make this. I want to have it right now. Okay. Well, the list has grown, but I'll yeah. tell you what we started with. We started with a carrot cake, yeah. a vegan carrot cake that actually gave the name to the Cafe Indigo experience. If you take one bite of this carrot cake, you're not going to believe it. What happens is people taste it, it goes right to their taste buds, then it goes quickly to the sensors in the brain, mm. hits the endorphins, your eyes roll back, and yes. you go, this is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. So is that still your favorite? Even it's though still, It's still on the top of the list, although I said to my wife, you know, we're vegan many years now, and I said, yeah. I miss whoopie pies. Can we have a whoopie pie? Oh. And my wife says, of course, she does all the research and development. She yeah, said, yeah. Don't worry, Paul, I'll make a whoopie pie. I'll tell you what, you guys have to sample this. I mean, I don't think there's anything left other than to try the whoopie pie, because yeah. I need to let the food speak. Right, so we're going to do some whoopie pies. Oh, no, whoopie pie, though. Woo! Whoopie! Whoopie! Wait, I need more. Ready? One. Two. Three. Three. Wait. I'm gonna buy like four of these. Wait, oh, turn the no. cameras off. We need to actually take way more. And I don't want anyone to see this. Take it to Sweet Talk. Sweet, oh, sweet talk. Get out of here. Mm. Hey guys, I'm Kyle Kay, and you're watching Sweet Talk on College Kitchen. This week, we're over at JP Licks on Beacon Hill, testing out some of the best ice cream around and dairy free ice cream at that. So, without further ado, Come on in with me, we'll give it a taste. So I'm here today with Ashley, the uh, general manager of JP Lix. Um, so tell us, what's awesome about JP Lix? Okay, well we make all our ice cream homemade from scratch in Jamaica Plain. Several of our pastries too, we roast our own coffee. Um, it's a great place for students to come hang out and study. We have free Wi-Fi. Tell us about uh, your favorite, your personal favorite flavor of ice cream. My favorite flavor of ice cream would be Oreo cake batter because it's just the best combination. Oreos are amazing and cake batter is amazing. And together, it's like a flavor you've never experienced before. It's really good. What are your seasonal flavors for this time of year? Okay, we have lots of different uh, seasonal flavors. Everyone's favorite right now is pumpkin custard. It does contain eggs to make it more of a custardy type of thing, but it tastes like you're taking a bite of pumpkin pie. Talk about your dairy-free options. Okay, so we have several uh, dairy-free and vegan flavors every month. Uh, this month we have Oreo hemp, pumpkin soy. We usually have a soy or a hemp flavor or um, a coconut-based flavor. They're dairy-free, vegan, and they're really good, really popular. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for taking the time. Appreciate yeah, no it. Worries. Thanks for coming. This baby is pumpkin custard. Ooh, I can already feel the difference. This baby tastes like pumpkin pie. This is something, and, I, and as you remember from the interview, this one's made with eggs, so it's very creamy, dense, and water. This last one here, Oreo cake. Fat. There's a lot going on in this little tiny cup right here. Let me find that. I hope you had about as much fun as I did. Make sure you check out JP Lakes over on Beacon Hill. And don't forget to like my Facebook. Thanks for watching College Kitchen. I'm Kyle Kay. And this is Sweet Time. Gabe Gibbs. And I'm Naja Muhammad. And we're here at the Boston Vegetarian Food Festival. And man, has this been a great day for our relationship. It's been awesome. 
So when we have our vegetarian farm, because you know we're heading to that someday, what, do you, what have you learned today that we're going to include on our farm? Baked goods. And the other thing too is this has been a life-changing experience for us to understand what it means to live the vegan, vegetarian way, to not abuse animals, to be good citizens. Mom, mom, mom. Hey, shh. Mom. Oh. This is our chance. Uh, um, I'm Naja Muhammad. And I'm Gabe Gibbs. And we've been here at the Boston Vegetarian Food Festival having a great time. We have. It has been great it's for been our really relationship. Great. My, my parents are in town and they've always wanted their chance at stardom or something. I don't know. Yeah. They're, they're adorable. But you know what? Let's go spend time with them. Let's plan our date, right? Yeah. Okay. We've been having a great time here at College Kitchen. Until next time, remember, if it's affordable, you can eat it. Ha <laughs> ha!